All right, I know it's been a long absence uh, from doing videos, but yeah, I've actually been quite busy lately. Um, I won't bore you with the, the details, but basically uh, I was selling my property and then buying another one, and my property took a long time to sell. But the problem is, is that I've got all my equipment packed uh, so that we could market the, the property better. So um, that's why I haven't done anything for a while, but um, I should be back into action uh, sometime in July and uh, doing videos more often. Um, <clears throat> in today's video, we're just going to have a look at the 6117. Now these came in uh, a few dial variations. So this is the, uh, what do you call it, gunmetal colour dial. And this crystal is pretty scratched up, so it's a little bit hard to see what's going on here. And I'm actually doing this with my cell phone camera at the moment because my good camera is packed away. So uh, you're just going to have to deal with uh, slightly worse uh, video quality. So we're just going to flip it over and just take the back off there, which I think is tight. So I'll just have to get a tool on it. It's actually quite tight, so I've just got to put it in a vise to get it out. And I know this is bad video, but uh, we'll just deal with it. So that's just to get a bit more grip on it, and then I'm going to get the. Uh, she'll just zoom out there. So then I'm going to get the Jaxa tool back on there. And got it. So just for a bit more leverage, really. Okay, so there we've got the inside of the movement. So it's actually quite a clean movement, this one. You can uh, see there the plates are nice and bright, which is really what we want. Um, let's have a look. So we'll turn that around so the balance looks pretty clean as well. So it's all good news. So I'm just going to start with the case. So we'll just drop the stem out and also the movement. So that's the movement ring there just coming off. And if we just zoom out a bit. Now, just going to take the movement out and you can see it's actually quite a nice dial under that crappy crappy crystal so we'll just put that to the side for the moment now when pulling these apart you've got to be pretty careful because the uh, you can easily damage that ring on the inside and of course they're not available anymore so we're just going to start with the bezel now I'm just going to put the back on here for a sec again and I'm just going to get a knife under the bezel there. And we'll just do it through some plastic, I think. And it's, a, it's actually stuck on with a bit of dirt, but I've got it there. So you can see the dirt up. Whoops. Now we'll just try that again. So you can see the dirt underneath the bezel there. And there's quite a bit. We've just kept the bezel really glued on. So now I'm going to press the crystal out. Now, because this is so old, I should just be able to do this with my finger. And I'm doing it with a cloth behind, just so I don't scratch the... Uh, rotating bezel there so we just take that guy out so that's one of the older rotating bezels which has a plastic section underneath so it's metal on top and then plastic underneath these ones are quite prone to stripping gears but it looks like we're okay here so I think we've got good news and that's in good condition Okay, so I'm just going to stop this here and uh, we'll come back to it and we'll have their movement ready to go. Alright, so we've got the movement out now and I've taken the dial off, off camera because I don't want to risk damaging it really. And you can see the 
date side of the movement there. So these these movements, uh, they're a GMT movement, although they're not really what you consider a true GMT because the GMT hand just is not independently settable like it would be on a more expensive watch. It just goes around with the other hands. And uh, the reason that does that, so we'll just take this off here. So that's actually the wheel for the GMT. Take that off. So the only difference between this movement and a 6105 is this here, which is the GMT wheel, and the little intermediate wheel there. That's the only difference. They're otherwise identical movements. So what we'll do now is we'll just take the calendar plate off. And I'm just going to try and do this without causing too much drama. just take those parts away incidentally this is one of my um, new version movement holders so they've got cutouts on the sides there for the uh, front loading 61 series movements which have a little lever that hangs out there uh, depending which way you've got the movement set up it hangs out either there or there so whether you've got it dial side down or the train side down Okay, so we'll just take that plate away. Now, we'll just take the <coughs> date ring off there. I'm actually slightly crook at the moment, so if I sound funny, that's why. Now, take the hour wheel off there. And we've got most of the movement disassembled now. You can see it there. You can see there the uh, you can see how the keyless works works there. So the first position is the date, and you can see that uh, that wheel there. Now the moves in moves in to move the day, which obviously this movement doesn't have, and goes the other way to move the date. So that's that integrated. That's a whole integrated lever there. It's quite complex actually when you get it out and have a look at it. Now we'll get this intermediate wheel out. Now I apologise for the lack of lighting here. I literally have no equipment at all. So we're doing this with the power of the Australian sunlight and whatever other ambient light I've got around. Okay, so I'll just take the cannon pinion off. Alright, so it's nearly stripped. So have a look what we've got there now. It's not too much left. See there, that's the uh, calendar wheel. And these have an all metal calendar wheel. There's nothing really wrong, in my opinion, with having plastic on the calendar wheel. Um, it's sort of the right place to use that sort of material. So that's just the <clears throat> little plate that stops this setting lever from going askew and we'll just actually take the um, this part off here and 
Now I'm not going to use rotor code here because I've done these enough times I can get them without losing them. And we'll just take the other bits off there. So last part in the keyless works there is the yoke and the set lever. And then we'll take the crown out and the sliding pinion. And that's that side stripped. So I'm just going to turn the movement over and we're going to do the other side. Okay, so we'll start with the rotor. And that just comes off there. Now, I'll take the balance off, but I'm not going to take the jewels out on camera because it's just too difficult. Alright, so we'll just take the auto wind plate off, which does also require further disassembly, but I'm going to do that off camera because it's a bit fiddly. Okay, so those screws are now loose. You can look under there, it's, there's the pull wheel there, it's held on by another plate and the magic fingers are in there as well. Now we're looking at the top, so what we're going to do with this movement, and we'll find out if it's got any barrel arbor wear, but we're also just going to replace these bushes here with jewels because I do find that quite often they have a bit of wear on them and it can cause really hard to diagnose running issues so if they've got wear on them it's gonna make the um, you can see here uh, there's a little bit of shake on there but if there's wear on them those gears actually go sideways which causes a lot of problem uh, a lot of problems so we don't really want that to happen Right, so we're just taking off the um, the pallet fork bridge there and the pallet fork. There's a tiny amount of power left in the spring there as well. So we'll just take that off. Now I can't see any obvious wears of barrel, uh, obvious signs of barrel upper wear there, but uh, sometimes they're on the up, on the other side. So we'll just keep taking that apart. Just pop that bridge up and you can see there it has a little bit of wear it's not as bad as they usually are but you can see that uh, there's definitely some oval wear on the uh, top bushing there and lots of sort of metal dust which is what that what that black stuff is just mixed with dry oil so even though it's not terrible, I think we're going to jewel that anyway. So that's, that's what we're looking at there. So while it's not terrible, I think we're going to put jewels in there anyway to just prevent any further wear. Okay, back to the gear train and taking off the fourth wheel. Now the, uh, the camera just cut out there because it only lets me film for 10 minutes. So we just took off the 
fourth wheel, which is that guy there. And then the third wheel. Now that's the hacking lever there. I'm just going to take that off. And we're going to remove the barrel. Now I'm going to pull that apart off camera. So you see there, there's the indent for the hacking lever. And we have the escape wheel there. And the last part is just the center wheel. And that's it. So fully stripped. Alright, so I'll leave that there and uh, look out for more videos coming probably sometime in July.